Everybody loves puppies, but what do you do when they get distracted and won't pay attention to you? Today, I'll show you how to get your dog focused on you and ready for training in all types of situations. We have a lot of work to do. Click thumbs up for Storm the Puppy and grab a copy of my book. It complements my YouTube channel perfectly. You also complement my YouTube videos perfectly. Our new bark box is here. Hey Storm, if you like the box this much, wait till you see what's inside. That's not how you open the box. Well, maybe it is. It's the 90s box. I love how they send the most unique and innovative toys and treats to me every single month. I don't need your help opening this. See that? We're really good at this sort of thing. You're good at other things. I don't know what yet. This has a couple of sounds. You have that standard squeak, and then you've got this deeper. Hear it? That keeps a toy really engaging because there's all these different dimensions. And a dog that'll play with you, you can teach them just about anything. They also have great options for dogs with allergies and they have these super durable toys for those heavy chewers, which you are. You just get these cool and hard to find things from local and small businesses. And all of BarkBox's treats are made in North America too. But if there were anything in this box that Storm didn't love, BarkBox would replace it, no questions asked. They have a number of ways that you can send a gift and give your favorite pup a new surprise every month. Storm, there's like three toys here we can be playing tug with. You'll get a free bark box when you get your favorite pup, a six or a 12 month subscription. Plus you're gonna get free shipping in the continental United States too. I'll have a special link in the description, barkbox.com slash dog training. Today we're gonna cover a few really common scenarios where puppies can get totally distracted and completely tune you out. Don't do that. You seem completely distracted. I'm specifically asking for your attention on me. For example, it's really common for dogs, especially puppies, to get super excited when guests come over and stop listening to you. In short, teaching your dog to listen to you around guests <laughs> comes down to teaching them a very reliable sit-stay in the presence of other people. But of course, you gotta work up to that. Let's see how Storm sit-stay is looking. <laughs> That's not stay. Stay. Yes. Okay, come on, good work, nice job. So we got a one second stay there, that's looking good. Sit, good, stay. Okay, good, come on, nice work, nice job. So that's good, that's a longer stay. So her sit stay is looking good so far. Let's see how far we can get with this, what do you say? Sit, good, stay, fine. I don't mind the lie down at all. Oh, look at that. Okay, good girl, nice job. That's a perfect stay. I'm gonna have a video in the description that'll help you get to this point with your dog on stay. Let's see what happens when I ask her to sit and stay and throw this treat in front of her. I think you have a hunch as to what might happen. Oh, see, she goes immediately when I drop that treat in front of her and what dog wouldn't, that's understandable. So let's see what we can do to get her to pay attention to me and not break that stay even when there's a minor distraction like a treat. So I'm just putting that treat down, yes. Good. See, by dropping it suddenly, that's more exciting to a dog. Stay. Nope. Gonna set the tree down. Stay. Good. Picking it up. Setting it down. Stay. Picking it up again to remove the temptation. You can see I'm just working up, trying to get into a groove. Good, I like how she snapped her head back and looked at me just then. Good, now let's see if I can drop it. Stay. Up here. Good work, stay, yes, good, stay, good, stay, yes, stay. Good, stay. And so that motion is really, really tricky for a lot of dogs. There's a difference between setting it down and saying stay and being able to just drop the treat like that. Stay. Okay, good job, you did great. I'm gonna give her a giant reward because that was amazing. See, if your dog isn't going to be able to stay when you drop a treat in front of them like that, they're certainly not gonna be able to stay when they're super overstimulated by guests or other exciting situations. Think about it, you're asking your dog to do something that goes against everything they want to do. That is real food on the ground and Storm wants it, but she's staying instead. It's not good enough to just teach your dog how to stay in one or two limited instances. You have to go out of your way over the coming months to put them in situations where they might be tempted to break stay. Arguably for Storm, this toy is even more distracting than the food because she's a dog that really loves to play. So let's see what happens when I ask her to stay and I throw this toy, which she obviously likes a whole bunch. First, I have to figure out how to get her to let it go though. I think I'll go watch my video on that. 
Good girl. Stay. Stay. I'm not dropping it and making it really exciting. I'm going really slow. See, the slower something moves like this, the less distracting it is. So you want to gradually make it more challenging for your dog. Stay. Stay. Fine, I don't mind the lie down at all. Stay. Good, nice work. Stay. Good, I brought a little motion to it that time. Stay. Good. Now I'm gonna try and make it more exciting. Good, yes. Just that little wiggle there. Stay. Let's see if I can throw it in the air. Oh, too much. Stay. Good. Stay. We're in a groove now. Ah, yes, good correction. Stay. Yes, good. I mean, think how hard this must be if you're a four month old puppy. Yes, right there. Do you see the light bulb go off? I'll go ahead and reward her with the toy here since she did so well. And if you're wondering, no, it's not confusing. Stay means stay when you say, and when you say it's okay to play with the toy, it's okay. Don't complicate things too much now. If you're new to teaching dogs, it's easy to assume that just because your dog stays in this extremely controlled circumstance, that they should now stay whenever you ask them to, no matter how distracting the situation. That couldn't be farther from reality. See, we're working on building up Storm's self-control. You can't expect her to stay around a major distraction like a squirrel, another dog, or a fun new guest until she'll stay for lesser temptations like treats and toys first. Let's say that you're super pumped to work on what I call a primary training session. That's where you're completely focused on your dog, teaching them something like sit or stay or roll over or play dead. But you know what? Just because you're ready to focus on training doesn't mean that your dog is ready to focus on training too. First things first, if you're having trouble keeping your dog's attention on you, during a primary training session, make sure that you're using an amazing currency. Use real meat if you have to, something like boiled chicken or something that's really good to your dog because sometimes dog treats just don't cut it. Also, don't expect a brand new dog to just start listening to you when you haven't yet built a relationship with them. Be extra tolerant of a lack of focus, especially in the first couple of weeks. If your dog is extra energetic, ouch, You'll have to get some of that energy out before you can expect them to learn and retain new concepts. And you know what? Fetch is by far the path of least resistance. I'll have my video on how to teach a flawless game of fetch in the description of this video. Or, you know, you could just choose to abandon training altogether and just play with your dog. That's my favorite thing to do. Dogs are really curious and they don't generalize their training very well in new environments. So everything that you teach inside, you're gonna have to reteach outside and in lots of different places. For example, even though I told Storm to stay while I dropped a treat inside, she's not going to necessarily carry that over to the outside. Even though the backyard is just a few feet away from inside the house, this is a completely different environment for Storm because the outdoors can be so stimulating. The sights, the smells, wind, a bug flying around can all distract your dog. The newer your dog is to training, the more time you should allow them to adjust to new environments. This is critical. If you want your dog to listen to you no matter where you are, you must take the time to get them used to as many different environments as possible. This means during that first year of training, you go out of your way to take your dog to a multitude of different environments. See, you've simply got to let them exist in those environments without requiring them to be hyper-focused on you. They have a lot to take in and it's your job to accommodate them and help them adjust to this new world. Over time and with lots of experiences like this, your dog will get better at generalizing their training and eventually they'll be able to listen to you no matter where you are, even in the most distracting of circumstances. Click thumbs up for Storm because she's awesome and get your dog their very own BarkBox by going to BarkBox.com slash dog dog training. Remember, you'll get a free BarkBox when you sign up for a six or 12 month subscription. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you like this lesson, join our crowdfunding community on Patreon to help keep these videos coming.